Gary Thomas, I um, thank you all for coming, thank you all for staying, thank you Elizabeth, uh, thank you BFI, uh, thank you Abigail, who is my colleague. The initial idea was I found out that there was something called the Victorian Society, which I thought was interesting. And then I discovered that there was something called the Georgian Group, and I just thought that was really amusing that they, there wasn't just one society back in the 19th century, there was these two weird groups. And in my mind, I thought about the Georgian group, you know, they'd all be wearing wigs and powder, and the Victorian society would all have top hats and stuff. And I was wondering if the great if they met, they'd be like this big fight. <laughs> so I actually wrote a script, a 20 minute script, and sent it to the BBC. I must have been mad. <laughs> about two months later, they wrote back and said, they really enjoyed it, they said it was too rarefied for the BBC, <laughs> which is quite amusing. So I, I actually put that bit about the rarefied in, in the script. When the technologist oh, yeah. talks about it's too rarefied, so that's a reference to the BBC. How did you get it? Most rarefied. Though there is some infestation. Uh, initially it was called Babinage. That's how it started. Uh, and after a while the, the Victorian side of it became more like the, the uh, government. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, I, I keep thinking about that. I don't know why. I mean, a couple of people have mentioned the door. You should take it to the fridge. Well, of course, yeah, the killing word, yeah. The fridge is a good take, yeah. I mean, it's such a, an art piece. That yes. It's, and, you know, it's, it's short, punchy. You perhaps send the script to Stephen Fry because he likes work. Yeah, true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make a good Victorian. Yes, you would actually. I did consider him. <laughs> good to <afford> him. Yeah. <laughs> But the fallen word is something is is completely different scale, it's true, completely right? different management. You're you're collaborating. How with? Uh, how, with I, I found it really difficult because it, the animation obviously you've got complete control over everything. Sorry, you have got complete control over everything. When you pass it on to an actor, you're you can only suggest the way they perform. Something. So it's very difficult. It's a very completely different discipline. And I, I did struggle with that. You know, a lot, a lot of it failed. I, mean, it, <laughs> I, I must admit, you know, a lot, a lot of the pieces didn't work. You know, sometimes it was a bit like making springtime for Hitler. <laughs> Originally, the um, script was much more word heavy, and yeah. what you realise is that when you start to film, you start to film, is that actually that doesn't necessarily work. It doesn't necessarily make a film. 
and you cut so much of what you'd written, yeah, didn't you, to, to, to the visuals. Yeah, initially it was very wordy. I mean, it's pretty wordy now, but... Every pump room pimp, every gabby gallant, every gobbed up word binge seedy lipped swell about town would be in town. I mean, I've seen a couple of versions of it, and it's, not, and, and, and it's interesting watching this, this version because I think this, this version's far away the, the best and makes, and, and makes sense. And, and yet, all the lots of the characters are the same, lots of the scenes are the same, but they say it seems to be a completely different narrative. But also, there wasn't animation in it in the same to the same extent and, and, and degree. There was, you know, there was mise-en-scene and, and design and stuff and objects, yeah. but which which have been in your your, your films before. Yeah, but the, but the but there wasn't that layering or the you know or, or, or the words and stuff. Definite, um, change in direction. <laughs> 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 Found my voice. Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I had so many technical problems today. I think it just. <laughs> my computer died, so I apologise. Um, about two days before the printers had died, and we were trying Yeah, you still owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably owe quite a lot of people. Yes, I did too. That's filmmaking for you. Yeah, don't ever make a film. Good morning, you can't believe it. Here, here. You think so? Oh, yes, I, I do. I yeah. can tell you. I that. think you've made a beautiful Oh, well, thank you very and, much. And of course, you're critical because it's your baby and you see all the fonts. I see all the fonts. Yeah. All I can hear is how the sound All you can see the mistakes and all you can see the things that you wanted to be there that aren't there. Yeah. But actually, right. I think we should sit here I'm completely <laughs> fresh. Yes. And that's beautiful. That's the really beautiful journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. I, I wasn't sure. It's hard to know whether people actually get it. You know, I mean, they're obviously, they don't get all of it. But um, I don't know, it's difficult to gauge. Well, it's, not, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've got, it's not worth putting the microphone on. You were at St. Martin's in the, in, in the 90s. Probably in the family a little bit. Your brother did graphics and your father did graphics. I think. I never really knew what he did. <laughs> Your mom went, your mom went to yeah, my mum went to St. Martin's, which is a bit weird. She went to St. Martin's. Yeah, and she drew Quentin Crisp. So it's one of the life studies. That shows you how old I am. I'll get to go all future. I was going to talk about my questions in Comic Sans. And what did you use? It's Helvetica. Everybody uses Helvetica, yeah. I remember when I was at St. Martin's, you couldn't use Helvetica. You, you got told off once at St. Martin's for using the Euro style. I, I, I was, there was a questionnaire and it was to see whether this thing was saying, what do you think of Euro style? Which is like really pan, which I didn't realise. I quite like it. And it was a bit like the conventional way to do it. And you got called into the office, liking Euro style. And then suddenly everybody bloody well used it. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite strict at St. Martin's about the typeface that you're allowed to use. All this. Yeah, it was true. You would get picked up if you. I don't know how you became a punk because I don't know what you've got in Hereford to be angry about. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in, in a way, I think um, the club scene and everything about the artists being marginalised, I think that was very much a punk thing because when you're a punk, it was outside the boundaries. It's like Know, being an artist in a very conservative world, and that's really what this reflects really is. And so I suppose it comes from that mission. The typography runs right through everything you do, yes. or appears to do, and you're all used to the English language. You know, that, where did that obsession come from? It wasn't being brought up in Egypt, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but true. interestingly, you've always had it though. Always. Have I? Have always, yeah. 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 That's always been there. Yeah. The, all the imagery and everything is so intrinsically you. Mm. Yeah. Well, since 1988 you've had it. <laughs> you're, you're, aware, you're aware of that, aren't you? No, that's at all. How many drugs did you take? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I think the author, it's a bit like me, because I paint. And it's a bit like when somebody says to you, oh, talk me through your painting, and you feel like saying, that, that is my talking. That is, that is what I want to say. And I think it's the same with you. You don't really, that is, that is your talking. That is your eloquence. Yes. <laughs> That's it your... like sitting sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're very similar in different eras, really. They both kind of have poetry in the film. They manage to, to capture something between the sound and the picture, which is poetry to me. I think Coulter is fantastic. And he was just doing this kind of uh, David Lynch, but I think he was. But there's a way they exact as well. Yeah, and, and just very, very simple effects. You know, Coulter is always. Um, very basic effects, you know, putting the camera, reversing the camera, but very effective. He's fantastic visionary. And um, you wrote the music yourself? I wrote, yes. Uh, not all of the music, some of the Fantastic producer. It's good fun to actually. Get back and play and have dance. you all, have you, get, 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 I think you used to be in a band. I did, did. <laughs> have, you, have you continued to, to, to fly and, and make music? I, I have, strangely enough, kept it going. I don't, I, when I came out of college, people said we, we, we'd like you to direct a commercial. And a couple of things in America, and I said, oh, can I do the music as well? Just trying it on. <laughs> And they go, okay, yeah, here's six thousand dollars. <laughs> Great. He <laughs> <laughs> used to go into the studio, go into a really expensive studio, book it for a day, and just just knock it around <laughs> for six thousand until the money ran out. And then they go, yeah, we really love. Going back to the film, is there some sort of reflection of prohibition and religious aspects there? That kind of thing about fate, which is, is people believe in fate, but they don't believe in God quite often. Yeah. We have all these sort of lower deities that we believe in, but Why? that's strange, isn't it? I am fate. I am fate. But I don't believe in you. Believe in you. Baskerville's character was sort of based on Voltaire in a way that Voltaire can do cause and effect. With Baskerville, I mean we cut some of it out with his father, but horrible things happen to him, yeah. but he always thinks it's for the good. There's this undercurrent of revolutionary thought, which is all back to the Emma Goldman's and back to, you know, the Femme de Seattle and everything. You've really captured that, and it is, it's there, I think, you know, vlog it. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you for your point. We would like you to buy the DVD, which is available to say. Um, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to thank you all again. I'd like to say yeah, that. always. Yeah. Yes, uh, I really want, must say thank you to Gary and Abigail. And I made it seriously. So thank you so much, Gary. I wouldn't have had this opportunity tonight. And, uh, you come out of college and you get a bit of funding, and then you, well, you've got Hollywood funding, but there's nothing in the middle. And uh, Gary and Abigail do a fantastic job supporting you know, artists, filmmakers. There's nobody else that's doing that. So they, they should really be applauded. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'd also like to thank Elizabeth from uh, BFI for hosting us tonight. Just, they've been so welcoming and fantastic, so thank you very much. Give us the opportunity to come here. A big thank you to Prime Focus who did the, the um, grading, and that was, uh, it, they were very gracious in, you know, giving that, I think they charged me one hour's time, they gave me four days grading one of, one of their top graders, which was Tom Russell. So really, really big thank you to them. It's, it's great that there's some companies in Soho that, you know, can invest that time in, in, into uh, art. I think, you know, we'd be lost without them. So thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you all. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you very much. Uh,